traditional Christian hours of prayer. In Bible times, the uh, military divided their day into three-hour watches, going through the 24 hours. Uh, so you have first watch of the night, second watch of the night, third watch of the night, and so forth. And then you have the watches during the day. The Christians took this idea and turned it into hours of prayer. So every three hours, we have a different hour of prayer during the day and through the night. And we're going to take you through a few of those. The first is the hour of matins, the morning hour. This is the very early morning, the time of day when our Lord and Savior Jesus was born. And so you'll hear Christmas in this first section, in the morning section. The traditional canticle or a hymn for the order of matins is the Te Deum Laudamus, which is an ancient hymn of praise. And one of the verses goes like this. When you became man to set us free, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting.
His praise in the assembly of his faithful people. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. The traditional song for this hour of prayer is the song of Zechariah, the Benedictus, which he sang at the birth of his son, John the Baptist. The last two verses go as follows. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace.
We come to the hour known as prime, which is the start of the workday. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. The mighty one God, the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to where it sets. From Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. God says, call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. Almighty God, you divide the day from the night. Drive far from us all wrong desires. Incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet in the way of peace. And having done your will with cheerfulness while it is day, grant that when evening comes, we may rejoice in giving you thanks. Amen. <coughs> when we go to our work days, we are reminded often of the great country that the Lord has given us in which to work. And so we pray for our nation with this next piece.
you come to the hour of midday, as we come to midday, we are reminded that these are the hours in which Jesus, our Savior, hung on the cross, suffering for our sin. Hasten to save me, O God, O Lord, come quickly to help me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. You are my God, have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Blessed Savior, at this hour you hung upon the cross, stretching out your loving arms. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may look to you and be saved, for your tender mercy's sake. Amen. Bach piece that you're going to hear is was originally played in the year 1714 on March 25th of that year, which was Palm Sunday. This is the Symphonia, which is an instrumental piece, and then the opening chorus from Bach's Cantata 182 for Palm Sunday. In the instrumental section, you're going to hear the instruments with a royal march. Uh, reminding us of the way that Jesus came into Jerusalem riding the donkey on Palm Sunday. And then you're going to hear the choir enter with their shouts of welcome.
Grace and peace to you from our Lord, God Almighty, and our living and reigning Savior, Jesus Christ, the great I Am. My name is Sam Rademacher. I am a junior in the pre-seminary program at Emanuel Lutheran College in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, studying theology and ministry. It is my great joy on behalf of the Emanuel to require to be bringing the word of God to you in song on this blessed day. It really is wonderful to be here with you. I don't even think I can begin to tell you how excited we all were the day Prop Dollar finally announced where we were going on our tour this year. I think all of us were jumping at a chance to have a short break from all that cold, white, uh, powdery stuff that's been showing up on the ground a lot lately at school, uh, greeting us as we go about our day, walking from class to class. And at school, I'm sure many of you can relate to this, we have, a set we have a set schedule as we go about our daily activities. Just like how many of you have a job in which you need to show up on time every workday, our classes take us through the hours of the day from beginning to end. For those of you out of school now, imagine you're still a student. And if you are still a student, or even a teacher now, what are those things that are always there, they always go off and they're always reminding you of where you need to be and when? Well, it's those school bells. They go off intermittently throughout the day. You got first hour, second hour, third hour, and so on. The hours of the day, they march on and on, and you have to go to class whether you're ready for it or not. And that test comes whether you study or not. That homework is due when the bell rings, whether you've done it or not. Now, some of you have a job where you can set your own schedules. You may do whatever you need to do and be wherever you need to be on your own time. You're not ruled by the bells. Perhaps you've had this experience when you're so invested in a project or a hobby that you're not always conscious of those hours just ticking away. You might be writing a paper or painting a picture or even playing a game when you finally realize that five hours have suddenly just disappeared. With all the busyness of life, some of those hours sometimes might tend to feel rather burdensome, especially with all the stresses that responsibilities and ever-present workloads can bring. How often don't we sometimes feel like we can't always make it? On some especially bad days, each hour might feel like sandpaper rubbing away at you, constantly trying to wear you down until there's nothing left. This is, of course, an effect of our sin. Before the fall, back in the Garden of Eden, the world was perfect. Imagine being able to take a walk with God whenever you wanted to. How awesome would that be? The jobs God had given to Adam and Eve were indeed necessary duties in his garden, but the work was good and pleasing to do. But after our rebellion, what happened? Remembering back to what happened in Genesis, God's just words ring true even today. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you, sh you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. Now, Things are hard, because we have failed to meet God's perfect standard. When the law is broken, so must also come the punishment, and it doesn't get any worse than eternal death and hell. When we look at ourselves and see our own sin, can anyone among us admit that they don't deserve that? We'd be more likely to invent time travel than to go our entire lives without sinning even once. Alone, we are lost. These days, you might be very conscious of the fact that you need Jesus to be with you every hour. In fact, without him, you'd have, you'd have no hope, no reason to function, no purpose to go on for even a minute. You and I need Jesus to stay with us and not leave, not ever. I admit it, Jesus, I need thy presence every passing hour. Well, if you've ever felt that way, then I have good news for you. Jesus is happy to come to you and be with you every passing hour. 
just like he was glad to come with and be with a couple of men once as they walked along the road to a town called Emmaus, and they were sad. Luke 24, so they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going further, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. These two men were discussing events that had happened at Jerusalem. How the man named Jesus had looked like he was the how he was the Messiah. He was a prophet, mighty in word and deed. They were hoping he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. But then he had been crucified. He was dead, and now even his body had been taken from the grave. Nothing was left of him anymore. Or so it seemed. And Jesus himself came and walked with them. And his presence made all the difference. The hours still passed, but now they passed with Jesus. He showed them from the scriptures how the Messiah had to suffer and die, but he had risen from the dead and had won the victory over all his enemies. The two men had not been mistaken. Jesus was the one who had come to redeem Israel, to forgive sins, to prepare souls for heaven, to heal the brokenhearted, to lift up the lowly, to give peace to those whose hearts were afraid, to heal us. Jesus looked on us who had rebelled, we who spat in his face and nailed him to the tree, and he smiled. He never stopped loving us despite what he had done, but what we had done. And that's grace. They urged Jesus strongly, stay with us since it is almost evening. So he went in to stay with them. He went in to be with them. What a difference when Jesus is with us too. I need thy presence every passing hour. What but thy grace can foil the tempter's power, who like thyself my guide and stay can be. Through cloud and sunshine, oh, abide with me. Stay with me, Jesus. And when he stays with you, you have a sure and certain guide who shepherds you through every hour of every day. In clouds, of, in clouds and trouble, as well as in days of sunshine and gladness, Jesus' presence makes all the difference, giving you someone in whom you can place all your hope and confidence. And the words we sing for you today are only a sliver of that divine truth that we can find all over in Scripture. It all points to one powerful name, Emmanuel. And what does Emmanuel mean? God with us. Every passing hour. From the moment of our conception, our God has been at our side. By his grace, he called us to faith and adopted us into his family. He was there to hear our morning cry. He rejoiced the day we were baptized. He is with us as we grow old, and he will continue to guide us through that night as the story of our life continues to unfold. It is a fitting name for our school, too, Emmanuel. When it comes to doing schoolwork or living in the dorms with friends, performing on a stage or out on the playing field, gathering together in Bible studies and joining in daily worship at our morning and evening chapels, one thing rings true throughout all of it. God is with us, Emmanuel, every day of the week. He's with us in our religion classes that strengthen our understanding of God and of Holy Scripture. He is also with us in every other subject from math, history, and science, and they are all taught from the lens of a Christian and biblical point of view. The lessons we learn in school help every student to be eager to defend their faith and be prepared to give an answer for the hope, for a reason for the hope that is in them. Jesus loves me, this I know. From the moment a young Christian takes his first step onto the campus to his last graduation day and beyond, Emmanuel is there. The very purpose of our school is to equip the student with that knowledge, to give him the skills and abilities to glorify God in whatever calling to which he may go. Even after he leaves the campus forever, the true Emmanuel never leaves him. So, from the rolling hills and forests of Wisconsin to the vast plains of Texas and back again, God's grace has truly been at work. If I tried to recount all the blessings the Lord has showered on us during our time at school and as we prepared this tour, 
I lose count pretty quickly. And it's been such a comfort to know that throughout every day, every school bell, across every mile, and even the ones spent on a bus, and with each congregation like yourselves, who gather to worship him in spirit and in truth, Jesus has been right there through all of it. So Christian, have cheer. There isn't an hour that passes where you don't need Jesus, but there isn't an hour that he misses either. Every time that bell rings, he is with you. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, every passing hour.